Out the Box TV, your man Roje. I am very excited to be introducing you guys to some, some characters. I'm just gonna say some characters in the city and some people that's like actually on, on TV, some streaming platforms I want you guys to take advantage of and show them love. So I'm here with my yes. girl, Dion Reed, yes. and she's the star player mm -hmm. in a show on Demi TV titled yes. Black Shiro. Yes. Did you yes. ever think that you was gonna be playing a superhero ever in your life? Never in a million <laughs> years. There's no way, especially being plus size, mm -hmm. you don't see us right. playing plus size unless it's like a comedy where they're making fun of us. Right. So me being in a serious role like Black Shiro, it's a dream come true. Now, now you may mention, uh, cause you know, the, the comedic element they mm -hmm. like to put on our plus size sisters. Like, yeah. I'm not sure if you watched Insecure, mm -hmm. but I, the last season they advanced everybody's character and I was mad cause I loved the character Kelly so much, mm -hmm. but she was, they still just made her, I was like, I'm, she's so worthy yes. to pull off more than just the jokes uh -huh. and the comedy, you know, where it's, it's poking fun or just them being the comedic yeah. element. So how was you approached with doing this role? Um, so I was at a shoot with um, a makeup artist or a local makeup artist that I uh, worked for here. Shout out to Demi. <laughs> hey, girl. Hey. Um, so we were working and they were shooting a, um, a, a commercial. Okay. And I was just working behind the scenes, just, you know, dotting where they needed to blot and all of that stuff, move out the way, shoot some background and go about my business. Mm -hmm. And Demetrius was actually shooting. Okay. And so he was like, hey, how you doing? I said, hey. And I kept on going. And about maybe two weeks later, he was like, hey. He inboxed me and he said, I need to talk to you. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, okay. <laughs> Why? Right. <laughs> and so he was like, I got this part that I'm thinking about, and I was told about you, about your fashion shows and all of this stuff, and being, you know, plus empowerment. So I need you to kind of be on the, you know, on the board with me. And I was like, oh, okay. He said, so let's meet. Mm -hmm. Well, when we met, he was like, hmm, maybe not on the board. And I said, what does that mean? And he said, well, I think I want to offer you the part. And okay. I was like, J Friend. <laughs> I love it. You want me to be the one? Okay. Yes. So I've done some work with uh, Demetrius in the yes. past, and so I've known about this project. It's mm -hmm. been a passion project for him yes. for a while. So when I finally saw like the trailer drop, mm -hmm. I was like, he got it done. Yes, He got he it done. Did. So he has his own streaming platform, mm -hmm. Demi TV, yes. and he has a lot of original content on there. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the shows that's on there. Yes. And I don't know if I can call I should probably say you're the flagship show on the on the on the platform because the, the platform is almost built around your show yes. i will say that yes. so the show was shot here in huntsville yes and a lot of local talent in in the situation how was it meeting some locals that you may not have known yet mm -hmm. how was the bonding situation mm -hmm. building the chemistry how did all that work out for you guys we were family instantly because i guess it's to me demetrius sets the tone for mm -hmm. everything so there was no no big heads no egos no none of that he was like listen leave all of that at home mm -hmm. me i'm the new cat you know i'm newbie i've never done tv any of that stuff so mm -hmm. everybody coming in was already so progressed and i'm just like and being the lead. And so being it was, the lead, it was so, a lot of nerves that came into play. Oh, it was a lot of pressure. <laughs> a lot of pressure. But they all made me feel so welcomed and it just flowed. It was no drama whatsoever. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna tell y'all a little bit about the premise of the show. Yes. And if I get any of this wrong, feel free to oh, correct okay, me. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can get this right. Okay. okay. So basically, you was on your way to like a party. Uh -huh. a, a theme party, you was dressed up in costume. Uh -huh. Somewhere along the way you end up having to stop a crime or something, so to speak. So you were mad. So nobody got to see this hero. Mm -mm this hero because they didn't know who she was because she was masked. Yes. So she just kind of kept up this rules as she worked to take down some mega situation. Yeah, it's a mega yeah. situation. It's a mega situation. It's a mega situation. Now I follow her on Facebook so I've been seeing you cry the tears of joy yeah. and you know so proud to see your work on the screen. Yes. And it's a dream but you you also have been doing things where you're motivating mm -hmm. you know women and Absolutely. empowering women or whatever. So how it obviously wasn't a hard sell for you mm -hmm. to jump on board this, but mm -hmm. through this show, Black mm -hmm. Shiro, and through your modeling shows, yes. Full Figured Fierce. Yes! Yes, I got it right. <laughs> uh, how do you continue to just, you know, not only build yourself up, but how do you mm -hmm. use that to build women? So 
Uh, Full Figure Fierce was basically built around my daughter. Mm -hmm. My daughter, Casey, has uh, giantism. Okay. And so growing up, um, like at five years old, she was already almost five feet. She was a giant. Okay. And so I saw all the things that my baby went through, not because of the children being mean, but the adults. Mm -hmm. The adults were like attacking her. Right. And so having to be you know, mommy and protector and teach her how to love herself. Mm -hmm. My husband at the time, God rest his soul, he said, you know, if you do this for Casey, you probably need to be doing it for some other people. And it just became second nature. Okay. Um, growing up, my, my relationship with my mother wasn't the best. So there was a lot of mental abuse. So mm -hmm. I know what it feels like to be overlooked, put down, talk too crazy, all of that stuff. So I don't want another woman to feel like that, mm -hmm. ever. I, I don't care what size you are, to be honest with you, but right. especially my plus size girls, my mm -hmm. tall girls, I don't want them to feel like that. So it's really become, I had to teach myself, then I had to teach my daughter. Mm -hmm. So if I can teach somebody else how to do it, I'm gonna do it. I'm loving it. Now, yes. season one is it's complete, but yes. you guys are still streaming on Demi TV. Absolutely. Uh, but do we know if season two is coming? Do do we have news of that yet, or we just got to kind of stay tuned to see if, see what's happening with that? It's coming. A good deal. It's coming. It's <laughs> good coming. deal. I was I was wondering, but it seemed like you guys had a very successful season, so we it's did. only right that we have to get season two Absolutely, underway. Absolutely, because he left us on a clip. We <laughs> okay. So listen, <laughs> Demetrius, um, we didn't know what was going to happen mm -hmm. we shot the scenes like we shoot the fi finale in september we shot some of the beginning like this this year right. like it was back and forth so we never knew anything that was going so we were watching it with y'all gotcha and when i saw the season finale i was like wait i'm who <laughs> no friend no so that means he might Oh, okay. Okay, we can't just leave it like this some now. We got and to. Some turns. Oh, baby, he threw us for a loop. Gotta love that. He did. Well, listen, if you guys want to check out Black Shiro on mm -hmm. Demi TV, yes. we have a special situation going on for our Out the Box viewers. If you use the promo code Out the Box, you get 30% off for your first two months. Now, this deal is it's, it's a limited time now. Y'all lucky. Up through August. So the details are right here. Yes. Promo code, expiration date, all of that is right here for y'all, right? So y'all be sure to check out my girl, Dion Reeves, Miss Tammy Townsend. Tammy Townsend. Black <laughs> Shiro, Demi TV. I yes. appreciate your time. Thank you so and much. And I thank you for coming through and oh, letting the absolutely. people know. Letting, letting the people see. Yes. Let them see. You yes. get your turn if you need to. Oh, get you a turn. Show them a little turn. Get, get into it. <laughs> You see it. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm love sorry. It. You guys keep it locked right here. We got so much more on the way for you right here. Out the Box TV. Let's go. <laughs> Your man, Roger, Out the Box TV. We're talking to some of our favorites, at least some new faces I feel that you should be getting familiar with as far as some of these shows on streaming platforms. Now, there's a new show on All Black by the name of Wicked City. And since I love witches, you know I'm in on it. But I want to introduce you to Chanel Mack, my girl, the Bronx bombshell, as we talk about this. Now, Chanel, I'm more than sure you figured out by now I really love shows about witches. Oh, I've noticed. Yeah, I mean, I love Charmed. I love American Horror Story, Coven, just pretty much anything with witches. So when I saw the trailer for Wicked City, of course, I was game, especially since it's led by black witches. Now, I want to know who encouraged you to jump on board this project, Wicked City? Um, it actually was our executive producer, Tressa. So she reached out to me and, you know, she told me about the project. She emailed me and it, it was like, it was like, how could I not say yes? You know, so we honestly, after that, you know, we, we jumped right into it. Our auditions, you know, by the grace of God, I got the part and, you know, here we are. Now, how close are you in real life to your character, Sharice? We are complete opposites. Now, I think one of the tweets that I made that caught your attention was the fact that I enjoyed Sharice because she was so matter-of-fact, low-key aggressive, uh, got to show a range of emotions over the course of these six episodes. Now, I just want to know, how was that for you playing this character? I mean, really, in reality, Sharice and Chanel do have a lot in common. So with kind of, like, building that character, I can kind of, like, I was able to draw from things that I was, I've already gone through. So... You know, it was fun. It, it, it was fun, like, building her up. But, you know, we're not exactly the same. I saw her as a big sister at one point, and then we got to see her transform from, like, this sassy character to 
some vulnerability to a little bit of fear. There's a lot going on with her and it was an interesting watch. So did you have any input as far as this character of Sharice or did you kind of play her straight to paper? I just played it straight to paper. You know, exactly how Serena and Kristen wrote it. Um, but yeah, we were just kind of able like to bring it to life. Man, and Vanessa Bell Calloway, a legend. I mean, she's been working my whole life, probably most of yours too. Now, do you know if she was the one brought on first and they built the cast around her or was she brought on later in the project? Um, she, I don't know. I know by the time I was brought on, I found out that Vanessa Bell Calloway was in it. So, okay. you know, like, you know, she was EP. This was like, you know, she was really into this project. So yeah, so by the time I came on board, she was already on board. Now, cause I'm stuck on this stuff, but did you have any infatuations with witches or dark magic before you were brought on to do this project? I, I did not. I really, so with coming into this role, I really had to kind of sit down and do my research and, and you know, gain my history on this because I didn't want to come into this prematurely and mm -hmm. disrespecting the history that Serena and Kristen kind of put into their writing. Mm -hmm. So I had to really like, you know, I had to really read up on this. This was like homework. Now, the crazy part about watching witch stuff, I love the fact that most of the elements that you guys had in the show, I was already familiar with, like scrying and the potions and the vials and things of that nature. So it was real cool to see, but I think it was even more cool the fact that the show is being led by black women, like all black witches. And I think this is the first time seeing a show about witches led by all black cast. I know there have been like pilots of other type of like black witch shows. Like Vanessa Bell Calloway was actually like in a black witch show in like the early 90s, if I'm not mistaken. The crazy thing is I remember that, but I don't think it went anywhere. So with that being said, is there pressure? So much pressure. Oh my God, what do you mean? <laughs> like, especially with us like filming season two right now, it's like we have to we have to really come correct because all of our fans, you know, just like you, they're very voice, you know, they're very boisterous about what they want to see, you mm -hmm. know, what's going on. They're very interested in the characters. So we have to do it for them. I mean, y'all did get it in and there were only six episodes for season one and not that the episodes were so short that it, we didn't get to like get the story, but we want more. I definitely wanted more. And I know the people that's watching on Twitter wanted more episodes. So are we going to get more episodes for season two? I mean, we're going to find out, but you guys are going to find out very soon. I know that. And of course, we're going through this writer's strike right now. So has that affected you guys at all? We personally have not been affected by the writer's strike. However, you know, we all stand with the WGA. Like, writers do require a certain salary so they can take care of themselves. So, mm -hmm. you know, we do stand with all of the writers that are striking. And, you know, we do support them. But this hasn't affected us specifically. Now, one thing I do know that when it comes to new shows, creating contents for these startups that you feel like there should be more eyes on. And I definitely feel more people should be watching this. But is there anything in particular outside of like Twitter and social media that you guys are doing to make sure more eyes do get on it? I mean, honestly, I can't speak for the, the other witches and the other ladies. But what I do, I, I'm Chanel Mack. I'm, I'm the Bronx Bob show. I'm the gift of gab. So anybody who meets me knows that I'm on a TV show. And I, I will take someone's phone and download the app. Right. I've gone as far to do that. I've done that a few times at the airport. Like, oh, let me see your phone. <laughs> like, you know, we can download this. This is the show. You know, I'll send them the link. Like, yeah, you know, we actually, all of us actually, I know that for a fact, we all try to get the word out as much as we can. Gotcha. Now, listen, there's a range of emotions that you show over the course of these six episodes, from the sassy big sister to, like, fearing for your life. So I want to talk about the handler, because by the time we got to him, like, you had already displayed a range of emotions. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the first thing I've seen you acting. So how long have you actually been acting? Um, so I've been acting right now for the last five years. So this is actually the biggest project that I've ever been on. But you know, I've been I've been doing it. You know, I'm I'm Meisner trained. So okay. you know, I know how to give it up on camera. But yeah, I've been doing this and studying my craft for like five years now. Now I know you guys are currently taping season two, and without giving too much away, what is something that you're hoping happens with your character Sharice in this new season? I I kind of hope that we get a better a better understanding of who Sharice is. You know, first you know first season we kind of got that surface level Sharice. You know, she was the big sister. You know, she was with the other witches. She was the badass. But we never really got to see her vulnerable side. So and we got to see the vulnerable sides of a lot of the witches. So I would hope that as an audience we would be able to see more of a vulnerable Sharice. 
And let's talk about your power real quick, the power of suggestion. Now, as a Charm fan, we didn't get to see this until like the eighth season, and we're getting it from you like off jump. So I love that. And I know there's some other powers being displayed throughout with the other witches. If you could have had one of their powers, which one would you have chosen? Probably Angela's power, probably Earth Magic. And I do think your power is the best. And our girl Claudette did say, we haven't even seen the full potential for your character yet. So I'm excited to see how this is gonna turn out. Look, y'all really don't understand how much that means to us, for real. Now listen, with most new shows, we do know that nudity is usually a selling point and you are showing a little more skin than the other witches on the show. Now, was that a conversation that you guys had before you started taping? Was there any hesitation, like any issues with you actually like going there on camera? Baby, let me tell you. So they did have a conversation with me, and and they were they were willing, and my director was like absolutely willing to tone things down if I wasn't if I wasn't comfortable with certain things, and I was like, look, I was given body last season. I was nice and skinny. I was giving you model. We could show it off. It's all right. And it wasn't and it wasn't that bad because Todd was handsome too. So it was <laughs> it was okay. But when we do go through those scenes, they do make sure that we're protected. You know, there's always like a coordinator on set. And we have a secret word, so if I ever feel uncomfortable, I could just say it and everything shuts down. Our director is kind of like real sensitive when it comes to us. Like, he's real gentle with us. We love Dale. He's like, you know, he's like a dad. He's like a Man. girl dad. And, and he's a girl dad in real life. So he knows how to like to deal with us. But I was absolutely comfortable. And this season, oh, babe, you're going to really see some skin. Now, I know you are currently shooting the second season to Wicked City, but you are working. So do you have anything else coming down the pipeline? Um, we do have a few series, you know, appearances coming up. I can't say anything right now, but you know, just keep a lookout because once it, once I'm able to talk about it, of course you're going to know about it. Listen, I'm excited to check it out. Wicked City season two is coming soon. I'll definitely keep you guys posted on where to watch it and when to watch it. Chanel, appreciate you for tapping in with Out the Box today. I'll definitely keep in touch with you as well. Now you guys keep it locked right here. I got more on the way. It's Out the Box TV. Out the Box TV, your man, Roger. I'm here with one of my favorites, D-Trey Wade. I call him Wade just because everybody else called him D-Trey. But yeah. it's all good. That fits too when it, you do it. it I, don't normally, I don't let everybody do it. My roommate, he was military, so uh, it just it naturally rolled off his tongue. But yeah. Yeah. And you know, I do I what I want him, around here. I call him Rolando. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's how Because happen. everybody call him Rolando. I'm like... like for Landry. Uh, yeah, I feel it. I feel <laughs> it. So my goal for this episode is like just basically exposing people to Black Hollywood, so to speak. And you're, and you're about there. Let me tell y'all, this man just randomly pops up on commercials now and TV shows and yeah, I don't things tell of that nature. Do he, he don't tell anybody until after it airs, which is crazy. What happens with the promo? You're supposed to let us know. Or you don't know if you're making a cut or what? What's going on? But that would take away from the element of surprise. I got to know to watch it. I got to know to tune in. One but, real, but you have tuned in. One, one real <laughs> surprise I got, I, you know, I had legit stopped watching Blackish for a minute. Mm -hmm. Not Blackish, Grownish. Grownish, yeah. For a minute. And then I just tuned in. I was binge watching, and this man pops up at the end of the episode. I'm like, I know that ML for what's really happening right here. <laughs> so, anyway, let me give people a little backstory. We've known each other for about, what, 10 years? Uh, if not a little bit longer. At least, uh, at least at, at minimum least, 10 at least years. Because I've been and, gone from, I've been gone for about six and a half. I knew you so, longer than four years when I was here. Yeah, it's been yeah. a minute. He moved from Huntsville, went out to L.A. to pursue his dream of acting, and now it seems like you're all it's over the screen. Yeah, man, it's, it's, it's growing. So you was telling me you had a little fear at first, or you knew it was time to go, but it wasn't necessarily fear. Everybody else had a fear. So tell yeah. me what helped you make that jump, make that leap, and take the take it out to L.A. Bro, two things: being miserable <laughs> <laughs> and prayer. Like I was, it's funny because like where we're shooting this is where I used to come outside and cry. I cried, I worked, I worked here Monday through Friday. I don't know if I can say the name of the place. Can I say the name of the place? <laughs> Go for it. So I worked at Huntsville Utilities, right? <laughs> the people that y'all pay to have your utilities. And I was miserable, um, not, not because of the job, but also not, not because of the job. But I just, I was, I was miserable. So I would come outside and I would just, I would cry every day and I would pray and I'd be like, Lord, I got to get out of here. Like, I have to go. Can I, can I please leave? Like, I have to get out of here. But I didn't know where I was going immediately. Right. And, um, yeah, after, after many days of praying and crying and then finally getting like answers and confirmations, I was like, let's go. Do you remember your first acting, uh, acting job? 
in LA. Yeah. Yeah. It was actually, it was actually, uh, um, I got there, got signed immediately to an agency and they booked me an Amazon gig. And okay. Amazon, it wasn't a commercial. It was, it was for it was like Amazon stills. Okay. So taking photos. So I did that. And then right after that, like I booked the target commercial. Okay. A national target commercial. Okay. This boy has had commercials <laughs> aired during the Super Bowl. I, yeah, two. Two, not just one, two. All right. We talked about the fact that you was on Grownish. You got one that's airing pretty regularly now on TV station that I, is it HPV or it's something? It's an HPV vaccination. Now, I'm going to let you know, I don't even know what HPV is, but this man was on the screen, so I, I was just happy about that. But what? The, the word is hard <laughs> to pronounce. It's like the human papilla something or a virus. <laughs> It's something that can affect children, like starting as early as like nine, eight and nine. So they okay. encourage you to get your kids vaccinated at that age Got to you. prevent from, I guess, contracting it. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's been he's been I'm doing a dad the work. And I want to have a daughter and she's cute. <laughs> you know, she was mad cute. And you were cooking. She was on set telling me what to do. See, I'm like, I'm the father. And she was like, we're well, cutting the tomato wrong, bro. <laughs> and I was like. Her mom was like, yeah, she's into cooking. See, and, and she was that, probably yeah. playing the daughter. She was like 22, you know, right, right. You know, Hollywood be lying to us real quick. No, she, she, she was, was really an adult. She, right, exactly, <laughs> exactly, right. She was our own little Gary Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I had a flashback to Gary Cole, Coleman being stuck in that cooler for nine months. In the <laughs> what? <laughs> Did you not remember he was stuck in the, that man died? Did Gary die? Where'd that Gary? Gary died. Gary and they died. didn't bury him right away. He was Which in the cold. What's the other one? Eman Emmanuel? Well, still, but he's still alive. Okay, he's alive. Yeah, okay, Gary gotcha. Culver. Okay, that was so uh, off topic. Whoa. I'm serious. Somebody looked it up. That man was in the cold. <laughs> no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Y'all can fast forward past this part. <laughs> You're also on Tubi. Yes, I have a, a film on Tubi. on Tubi. It's a uh, it's a it's a full feature actually. It's like about an hour long. Okay. It's called Congress in Cali. Check it out. I promise you, you'll love it. It's a really good message too. Tell me a little bit about the premise. Like, so the, the the premise is like basically two two unlikely individuals meet and become fast friends. Um, there is a Something's, something happens to the female lead, and in it is a very good message. All right, so what do we have on the horizon for Mr. d -Tray? Um, A lot of auditioning, <laughs> a okay. lot of auditioning. Um, I, just signed, I just signed with a modeling agency. Okay. Like I've, I've had the, I went to New York several years ago, and mm -hmm. I was like, I, I saw a Calvin Klein ad, and the dude was just in underwear, and I was just like, that's gonna be me. And so I, I signed with a modeling agency. One of the photos that I that I took was me in Calvin Klein underwear. Okay. And I was like, I'm gonna book that. And if I come to find out, the agency that I actually booked with or that I signed with, Calvin Klein is one of their clients. So when y'all see watch this man out. over here, his on, 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 on a billboard <laughs> in Times Square on Sunset. <laughs> Yeah, man, I'm going places, and it's 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 surreal. I I I feel like I am the perfect example of what if it works? Because, mm -hmm. you know, we always say, like, you know, what if it doesn't work? What if it goes bad? What if it, what if it fails? But what right. if it does right. work? And I'm literally, like, living proof of what if it does work. Like, I'm, I've been living and thriving and living my dreams. And even today, right now, it's still very surreal. I love it. Yeah. This man is on TV. I'm on OnlyFans. You can find us both. What? On different, huh? Subscription. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> 
I'm just saying that gets subscribed to both of our. Yeah, I don't no, have one okay. of those. No, no, no not I, that I haven't considered. <laughs> you know, times got hard. You know, you know, but I managed. You know, I I'm not a struggling artist. Never been a struggling artist. Gotcha. But there were times where I was kind of like, I'm gonna have to put these feet out there, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so, if the people want to follow your journey, where can they find you online? You can find me on Instagram at dtray.wade. My Facebook is. Detray Wade. I'm not really on TikTok because I don't I don't subscribe to having to be busy on TikTok like that. Uh, um, and Twitter, I, I I got rid of my Twitter because it was more of a freak Twitter. Gotcha. <laughs> I was but like, we, we gotta get off of that one. We do like freaks. All right, so we'll be back. I'm gonna keep it locked <laughs> right here out the box. More on the way. Some of my favorites we are trying to introduce y'all to a couple of shows that you should be streaming so you know just jump on in at the start of this situation and we're gonna start it over because i don't like how i did that <laughs> out the box tv your man ro j trying to encourage you guys to get on your streaming right with celebrate <laughs> okay. i act like i ain't did this before over the course of the six episodes, I feel she was the one that got to show a range of emotions. So, I forgot my question. Got the red. <laughs> of course, I will keep tabs with you as well. Y'all keep it locked. We got more on the way right here, Out The Box TV. You stumbling in the middle of a little bit. <sighs>